best stay back, sir. Sir, step away! has so much alcohol, he could keep this district afloat for quite some time.
Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Good evening, Mrs. Fishburne. Of course. I'm not sure the epidemic is what worried... What can I do for you, Dr. Reed? Mrs. Fishburne, are you in need of any medical assistance? I am afraid I am, Doctor. I don't feel well at all. Then let me give you a prescription. I thank you for your generosity, sir. It's something this part of town truly needs. Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. Let's grow eyes on the back of that head, sir. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Do you need any help? <coughs> Can't be good for business to see the bartender. Indeed. It would be a shame to taint the delicate taste. Oh, thank you, Doctor Reed. My customers and I, we all thank you. You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewin guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor, but it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor, most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Welcome back, Doc. Tell me about your arrest for attempted murder, Tom. I tried to kill someone. I got arrested. I paid my debt and I have nothing to hide. So you mean your customers know about your sordid past? Yeah, <laughs> why do you think this is the last pub open? I have nothing to hide and I don't judge. That's a relief for many round here. Do you think prison changed you? Made you a better man? Oh, I don't know about that. All I brought back is bad memories, scars. <laughs> and an ugly tattoo of a blue turtle. But do you feel cleansed of your sins? All I know is that I'm at peace. I did what I did, but I wouldn't do it again. Does that make me a better man? I don't know. Why not leave town and start a new life after you got out of jail? I grew up in the East End. This is where my roots are. This is where I want to help others and die eventually. Do you think the docks will always be a hive of scum and villainy? As long as poverty and fear run the show, I don't see how it would change. Misery loves company, as they say. Don't you feel threatened, staying in such a violent and criminal neighborhood? I've made peace with my violent past, Dr. Reed. 
I may not be a pacifist, but I'm not angry anymore. Damn it. I hate drinking her off. You attempted murder. Give me some details. I was given an order. An order to kill. I was an obedient gang member at the time. A proud, wet boot boy. Why did you join the gang? Because I finally felt useful. Do you have any idea what it means to feel respected when the rest of the world shits on you? So you were ordered to kill someone. What happened then? I don't know if you can possibly understand, but... I couldn't kill him. I just stood there, pointing my gun. Someone saw me. I gave up. Why couldn't you shoot? My target was eating in that fancy restaurant with mirrors and music. He was eating, drinking, laughing. He was having such a good time. I hated him for his bottomless appetite, an easy life of easy pickings. And then something happened. You refused to kill him because you wanted to feel some of that happiness yourself. You empathized with him. Exactly. The man was a bloody landlord who rented overpriced flats. A selfish bastard. But he made me smile. And I was no different from him. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Still working at this hour. That's what I call dedication. Do you require medical assistance, Miss Cavendish? Don't feel so good if you have to know. I knew that keeping the bar open with the epidemic wasn't a good idea. Take this, it'll help. Perhaps you should think about closing the turquoise turtle for a while. Tom always said we've got to keep the doors open. <clears throat> but thank you, Doctor. Tell me, Sabrina, do you really believe Tom has renounced his life of crime? He proves it to me every day he tells the truth. Tom Watts is a good man. One of the best. And you don't think he might fall back into his sordid ways? We can all do terrible things, Dr. Reed. And we never know what we're really capable of until it's too late. Were you aware of Tom's past incarceration? That's the first thing he told me when he offered me the job. He didn't want me hearing about his past from anyone else. Did it surprise you to find out about it? <laughs> Not really. I was already aware of his reputation before I met him. That's why I came to the Turtle in the first place. Most people would have run away because of that. Not me. I thought a man like him could give me stability, you know? At least to some degree. And I wasn't mistaken. Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise for a time. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Can I offer you my medical... I'm fine. Fa Goodbye, Miss Cox.
best be moving on. See them fancy clothes? This one's a top turbulent team!
29 Pretty Orchard Street. This is it. What's in there for me? There's been a fight here. This window was shattered with violent force. Someone's been pulled through it and dragged through the street. Who could have done that? by leeches playing a nasty game.
The marks on this woman's neck were made by the fangs of a vampire. This is the very flower my mother tossed on Mary's coffin. Someone is targeting my family. Only a golden watch in her pockets. Her shoes and clothes are quite worn out. Right then, it's a sick game, but given no choice in the matter, I might as well win it. <laughs> I won't let you escape. You're very fast, but I'll catch you. They've all been butchered.
name of Christ, someone help me! <laughs> You! What have you done? Vicar Larrabee? What happened? Demon! Hell Scourge! Son of Perdition! Vicar! <coughs> Vicar! Jonathan's no demon. He's just a soul. Returned from the dead. Like your Christ, Vicar. Mary? Is it really you? Oh, it's me, all right. Precious brother. What is mother doing here? I'm gathering the family for a final reunion. All smiling, all dead. Thanks to the good Dr. Reed. Mary. Mother, say hello to your son. Hello, Jonathan. Mother, I... What do we have here, mother? The prodigal son has lost his tongue. Our Jonathan always had the first and last word at dinner. The entertainer, the star of our show. I'm sorry. Let me explain. Shut up. It's my turn to do the talking. I have this nasty hole in my chest, Johnny. It needs to breathe. Of course. You can speak. My prayers went so long without an answer. My husband, killed in France. My child, carried away by the flu. My brother promising to return in his letters, then disappearing in thin air. I went from hospital to hospital. Cemetery to cemetery. Grave to grave. I've lifted every stone in London, searching for an end to the nightmare. And there you were, in front of me. On a dark pier. The hunger had taken me. The joy to have finally found you. I longed for your arms, a final happy ending to so much tragedy, to tell me all would be well again, as you did when we were children. <laughs> it was this filthy dock where you greeted your sister. I dug a tunnel from my grave with my fingers and teeth. Mary, I thought I had murdered you. I tried to end myself. We've been through the same horror. We are a disease, Jonathan. A sickness that corrupts all it touches. All we kiss, and all we kill. Look at me. Admire your ilk. I'm so sorry. Apologies will not suffice. I demand reparation. I want a miracle. Are you a miracle worker, Dr. Reed? No? <laughs> I'll show you mine then. The family Reed. Reunited and complete. Living forever in a red sea of eternal love. Time to go, Mother. Say hello to my son for Mary, me. Mary, wait. I have made friends with vital knowledge, vampires. We are not alone, Mary. With time, we can learn to live almost as we lived before. How long? What? How long will this masquerade continue? I've been watching you, all these nights in Whitechapel, pretending you're still a doctor. You believe you're just fighting a disease, but it's you, the disease, Jonathan, you! I'm a scientist. I'll find a solution. Let our mother go, please. You're always the one to sway me to reason, Jonathan. But before, your motivations were always pure. Now you're tainted. Let her go! She has no part to play in this. <sighs> Very well. Have you heard our good doctor? You can go home, mother. Go home and rest in peace. Yes. I'll go home and rest. <laughs> it's so easy to make them obey or forget puppets for our pleasure. I've seen you have your fun. You are mad. Oh, so 
that's what I am, Doctor. Mad. I was beginning to wonder. I I've been hearing these voices in my head. One in particular. That of my dead brother. This is the reason I must kill you. Not for your betrayal. Not for our poisonous kiss. Not even for the lies you tell yourself. No. It's so that smooth and wicked voice will stop ringing in my ear. Mary. No, don't! Time to die, brother. And this time for good. You killed me, brother! in peace, monster. are just to die for. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jonathan. <laughs> 